If you would, turn to John chapter 14. And when you find it, please stand for the reading of God's Word this morning. John chapter 14 and verse 6. John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come and worship you here this morning. We thank you for Brother Steve and those just who led out and worship God. I, I thank you for this opportunity to open your word up now, God. I pray that you just speak through us. I pray not my words, but your words. I pray your will be done. I pray decisions be made for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to do a little interaction real quick, okay? I'm going to, when I point at you, I would like you to say, you need Jesus, okay? So we're going to practice. That's good. Y'all did good. Y'all listen. I appreciate you. Y'all do better than, than teenagers sometimes. Y'all, y'all listen right away. All right, here we go. Here we go. One more time. All right, all right. Hey, listen. We all come in here this morning with just different roads, different paths. We had different experiences this week. Listen, some of you come in here and everything's going good for you. You got a smile on your face, a little pep in your step. But you know what? Hey, some of you come in this morning stressed, depressed, and ready to give up. Nothing seems to be working out. You know what? Some of you come in this morning with a lot of church knowledge. You've read the Bible many times. You can quote verse after verse after verse. You probably stay up here 30 minutes telling all the memory verses that you've learned. You know what? Some of you come in this morning, you don't know John 3.16. You know what? Some of you come in this morning, you've been in church your whole life. You've been to Bible school, Sunday school, church camp, BTC. Anybody know what BTC is? All right. You've been to all that. And you know what? Jesus. Maybe today was the first day you ever stepped through the church of uh, the doors of a church. And you know what? Jesus. Right, here's where I'm getting at. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. It doesn't matter how rich or how poor. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It does... Each and every one of us, from this side to this side, from the front to the back, we all need Jesus. Four points that I want to share with you this morning. I want to, we're going to look at a few different stories in God's Word, text in God's Word. The first point, a dad that needed Jesus. Second, we're going to look at a mom that needed Jesus. Third, we're going to look at a friend that needed Jesus. And fourth, I'm going to tell you, I need Jesus. All right? So if you have your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, and we're going to start in verse 21. Looking at a dad that needed Jesus. Verse 21, it says, Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat, to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, uh, Jairus, Jairus, sorry, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Y'all see, when I read, I always try to picture it. So picture Jesus is here, you got a lot of people, and here comes Jairus, and he falls at his feet, and listen to verse 23, and begged him earnestly, saying, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and, and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. Jairus came to Jesus and just said, Jesus, I need you. When I read this first, I think about my own life. And in that time, uh, Kinsley was like one, about to be two. It was a normal evening. Me and Melissa thought, oh, we got our chores done. We're going to sit down. We're going to watch TV. Both girls were tired. Like Riley's laying with Melissa. I got Kinsley in the recliner holding her. We're watching TV. Everything is good. 
all of a sudden, Kinsley starts shaking. And if you're a parent, you know, that's scary. Your children's life is the most important, one of the most important things to you. Their health, their well-being is so, so important. Kinsley started shaking in my arms. I'm young. I, I'm dumb. I don't know what to do. And I'm Melissa, Melissa, Melissa. Melissa calls 911. We lay her on the ground. She's shaking. Her eyes roll in the back of the head. And all I can say is, God, help. You imagine Jairus coming to Jesus. His daughter is sick. It's, Jesus, I need you. He's coming. And you know what? Jesus cares. Jesus cares about Jairus. Jesus cares about the daughter. Let's see what happens. So Jesus went with him. And a great multitude followed him and thrown him. Can you just imagine? Jairus is so concerned about the daughter. Here they are walking. And here there's this crowd. It's just so big and so big. We skip a few verses because we'll come back to the story in, in the middle in just a little bit. But skip down to verse 35. It says, While he was still speaking... Some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Imagine Jairus' heart, how it just sunk. Imagine his feelings. Imagine his emotions. Imagine how he's feeling. You parents, you know he's hurting. And it says, why trouble the teacher any farther? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. Isn't that some beautiful words right there, those four words? Do not be afraid. I imagine Jairus walking with Jesus. He, like it said, Jesus heard the news that came. I imagine the, the you know, when you get news, you, you can't hide it on your face, can you? The, the, his face just says it all. And Jesus just kind of puts a hand on his shoulder. Hey, don't be afraid. It's going to be okay. You know, in God's Word, there's a lot of places where He says those four beautiful words, do not be afraid. Hey, in Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse 1, it says, when you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, y'all ready? Do not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God is with you who brought you up from the land of Egypt. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9, it says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Y'all know what's next? Hey, go ahead and tell me. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. In Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 8, you know what the first four words are? Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20, it says, But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. We got some dads here. Dad, you come in this morning, you got a, a lot on your shoulders. You're thinking about your job. You're thinking about your life. You're thinking about your family. You're thinking about so much. And maybe, maybe you need to hear these four words this morning. Do not be afraid. Dad, you're here and, and, and you're trying to do things by yourself. You're trying to solve problems by yourself. What we need to do is like Jairus saying, Jesus, I need you. Dad, this is what we need to do. Jesus, I need you. We finish the text, verse 37 of Mark chapter 5. It says, And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion? And we, the child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kamai, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, 
for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. Hey, just a few verses earlier, you pictured Jairus' face, right? When he got the news. Can you imagine Jairus' face now when the Lord says, Arise, and she got up and walked? He's a happy guy. Hey, listen, this dad needed Jesus. Hey, us dads in here, we need Jesus. Hey, the second uh, text that I want you to turn to is in Luke chapter 4. We are going to look at a mom that needed Jesus. Luke chapter 4. In verse 38 and 39, it says, Now he arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house. But Simon's wife's mother was sick with a high fever, and they made request of him concerning her. Peter's mother-in-law was sick. They're concerned about her. And they say, Jesus, we need you. Verse 39, it says, So he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and served them. Ladies, this morning, I want you to think about some of the stories that you've heard many, many times of ladies that carried a heavy load, of ladies that had a life that was full of burdens. Think about the lady in Mark chapter 5, in between the text that we were reading. This was a lady that had a health issue for 12 years. This was a lady that went to many physicians, a lady that spent all her money, and she wasn't getting any better. She was just getting worse. As Jesus is with Jairus, ready to walk to his house and heal his daughter, there was a lady in the crowd that had experienced this pain, this just torment for so long. And she knew what she needed. She knew what she needed was Jesus. And she said, if I just get close to him, if I just get close to him, I touch his clothes, I'll be healed. You know what she did? She got close to him. She touched his clothes. And you know what happened? She was healed. She needed Jesus. How you know, in John chapter 4, about the lady at the well, you know, Jesus said, I must need to go through Samaria. And he met the lady there that day. The lady was an outcast in society. No doubt she was talked about. No doubt she was mistreated. She was, trying to, she was trying to fill a void in her life in all the wrong ways that only Jesus Christ could feel. But that day, when she went to the well, she met Jesus Christ. She had conversation with Jesus Christ and her life was forever changed. She went back into town and said, hey guys, y'all got to come see this guy Jesus. You got to come see him. You got to come see him. And it says, in John chapter 4 and verse 39, it says, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the woman who testified, He told me all that I ever did. Mamas, ladies, Peter's mother in law needed Jesus. You know, the lady with the health issue needed Jesus. You know, the lady in, in John chapter 4 needed Jesus. In John chapter 11, y'all know Mary and Martha and how she had that brother Lazarus, and Lazarus was really, really sick. And Mary and Martha, they sent word to Jesus. Jesus, come. The, uh, the one you love is sick. And what did Jesus do? He hung out for a little bit. He hung out for a little bit. And then he went and Martha met him. Jesus, if you would have just been here. If you would have just been here. Jesus, we needed you. And Jesus, hey, everything's going to be okay. Right? Everything's going to be okay. He said, take me. They went to the tomb. They said, hey, take, take it away. Take the stone away. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And it says, Lazarus came forth. Those grave clothes and that just fell and he went, he went on his way. Hey, when the Mary and Martha, they knew they needed Jesus and they thought Jesus was late, they realized that Jesus was right on time. Hey, sometimes in your life, in our lives, no matter who you are here, sometimes you think, Jesus, I need you, and you want it done right then. Hey, your time's not God's time. Hey, Jesus' time is perfect. Jesus' time is great. Jesus knows all. We don't. Jesus' time in this story was perfect. Ladies, 
Just like these four women that we've said needed Jesus, you need Jesus. Just like these women that we read about had such a heavy load, you got a heavy load. Mamas, you got the, one of the heaviest loads of anybody. Because you know why? You don't just carry your load. You carry the load of your spouse. You carry the load of your children. You carry so much. And it's on you. And so many times, so many women, they try and they try and they try and they just get weak and the weak because they try to carry it by their self. But listen what it says in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Mamas, ladies, you're weighed down. I'm going to encourage you this morning. Try, quit trying to do it all on your own. You can't solve all the problems. You can't answer all the needs. You can't carry what is being placed upon you. What you need, the crowd, y'all tell them what they need. Jesus. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. So we saw a dad that needed Jesus. We saw a mom that needed Jesus. Let's look at a friend that needed Jesus. Look at Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Jesus is very popular. Everybody wants to see him. Everyone wants to know what's going on. They want to they hear him. In verse 2 it says, Immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them. Have you ever been in a place where people wanted to get somewhere quick? Everybody's like walking fast and they just start walking really super fast. I just imagine that's kind of what was going on in this day. They hear that Jesus is here and people just start seeing people walk. And they're afraid that they're going to get a back row seat and so they just start walking faster and faster. This place is crowded. And in verse 3 it says, Then they came to Him bringing the paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. In verse 12, it says, Immediately he arose, took up his bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. I jump back up to verse 3. This paralytic man, he couldn't get to Jesus by himself. He needed some help. He needed a friend that would care about him. He needed some friends that would, would help him along the way. Hey, in this, in this text, we see some really, really good friends. We see, see some friends that are concerned. They're concerned about his well-being. They're, they're, they know that if they just can get him to Jesus, his life will be changed. We see some loving friends. They're putting the needs of their friend above theirs. Could they have gotten to Jesus faster? Could they have been in a, in, a, in a better spot? But hey, listen, they love their friend. They cared about their friend. They want to get him there. Not only were they concerned friends and loving friends, they were determined friends because they get there and the crowd is very, very big. But they didn't say, well, I try my best. I guess we'll just have to try another time. No, they were determined to get him to Jesus. And what did they do? It says and they could not come near him because of the crowd. They uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. Hey, they got it done. Think about your life. Think about where you live. Your neighbors, people at your work, you got a lot of friends. And more than likely, you got at least one friend that needs to be carried to Jesus. Will you be the friend like the friends we read about? Will you be the friend that, that shares? Will you be the friend that, that says, I want to get you to Jesus? 
I know how important Jesus is. I know what Jesus can do. I know that He can change your life. I want to get you there. Sometimes we have the wrong attitude. We say, not my mess, not my problem. Sometimes we say, well, I said that word, and we give up. We need to be like these friends that didn't give up, that didn't quit, that showed concern, that showed love. Lastly, I want to tell you, I need Jesus. I was saved at age 11. At age 11, I, I knew that I was a sinner. I knew that, that all have sinned. I, I went through the Romans road. I knew that I was a sinner in need of a Savior. I knew that if I was to die, I would die and go to hell. I went to my mom. I talked to her. We went to her bedroom. She opened the Bible with me. We read verses and I knelt down at the foot of the bed and I asked Jesus Christ into my life. But you know what? Every day after, you know what? I still need Jesus. I need Jesus. Parents, I, I was thinking about this. As parents, we want to see our children become independent. Right? Y'all want to see your children become independent. You... uh. Remember when you taught them how to ride their bike? You started off with a tricycle and then a bicycle and you were holding the back seat. How many of you parents held the back seat? You held the handlebar, you just went that. But wasn't there a day that you only, you just hoped that they would be independent bike riders and be able to do it by their self? Luke is my youngest boy. He, he just turned eight in August. I get the pleasure of teaching at the same school that he goes to. And each morning I'll be in my room turning on some, getting my classroom ready to go for the day and he, he'll come in, Dad, are you ready to go? And each day I get to walk him from the high school over to the elementary. It's a very, fa uh, a very, very favorite part of my day. It's awesome time because I grab his hand and we walk. We walk over to the elementary. I say, Luke, I hope you have a great day. Daddy loves you. I give him a kiss. I get a kiss. I'm happy. All right? But do you know what? When Luke goes to college, I'm still going to love him. And I'll still give him a kiss. But I don't think me holding his hand to his college is going to be a great idea, right? I want to see him become a little more independent. You parents, growing up, your, your kids that came to you and said, can I have some cash? And you gave cash, right? There's a time in your life where you want them to get a little more independent where you don't have to give the cash, <laughs> right? I was thinking about that. Us as parents, we want to see our kids become more independent. But thinking as a child of God, I think God wants us to become more dependent. I hear that? I think God wants to see us become more dependent. As I get older, you know, when you're in your 20s, you think you can do anything and solve anything. But as, as we get older, we realize we can't do anything right by ourselves. Only by the grace of God, only with the help of God can we do things. Jesus, listen, I got to say, Jesus, I need you every day. Hey, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. This morning, it's my hope that you, if you're here and you're a believer in Jesus Christ, that you would leave this place determined to be dependent upon Jesus. That when you wake up in the morning, you would start it off with, Jesus, I need you. When you go throughout the day, when you go to work, when you come home, in your relationship with your spouse, in your relationship with your children, in your relationship with everybody that you're around, you say, Jesus, I need you. <coughs> hey, when you, when you read the Bible and you see the love of God and how He loved the unlovable, how He loves that kiss, how He loved the woman at the well. How he loved so many people that other people didn't love. And you think, that's what Jesus wants me to do. You know the, the greatest commandment, to love the Lord thy God with all the heart, with all the soul, and with all the mind. And the second is like unto it, to love thy neighbor as thyself. And you think, 
Did God know about so and so in 2024? God knew about so and so in 2024, and God wants you to love them. And to love them, you know what you need? You need Jesus' help. You need Jesus' help. You read about how Jesus fed the multitude, and it said that he had compassion. And you think about different people in your life, and you say, I need to show more compassion. You know what you're going to need? You're going to need the help of Jesus. It's my prayer that as us as believers, that we would understand how dependent we need to be on Jesus. That we need to quit trying to do things on her, on our own. When our kids was little and they tried to do stuff on their own, you would laugh about it and say, look at little Miss Independent, right? Do I ever do that or is that just me? I'm crazy. You would say, look at little Miss Independent. But I hope that people in your life will look at you and they will know, look at, look at Mr. Dependent. Look at Mrs. Dependent because all they ever talk about is how they need Jesus. Maybe you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Your greatest need isn't a vacation. Your greatest need is not more money. Your greatest need isn't a new car. Your greatest need is Jesus Christ. He came to this world because of His love for you. He said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus, in His love for you, He came and He died on that cross so that you can spend eternity in heaven. You've heard about His love for you and you've been putting it off. I hope and pray that today will be the day that you say, Jesus, I need you. Let's stand and pray. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to come and worship you. Thank you for your word. God, I pray that each and every one of us realize what we have in you, a friend that we have in you, that we can walk with you and talk with you you a long lost weary way that God that you that you love us you care for us you're concerned about us that we don't have to carry our burdens alone but we can give them to you God we don't have to be directionless but we can go to you and get direction God I pray that is there, if there's one here that's hurting if there's one here that's stressed if there's one here that's depressed that they would quit carrying those burdens alone and that they could give it to you God I pray that Lost souls come to know you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.